base. I've moved. Third. Base. It's kind of difficult once you release the technology to be analyzed and give it to everyone. They can just run with it. You really can't keep the weapon potential hidden. You really can't. Look, with ET technology, you can literally rule the world. Welcome back to Third Phase Moon. Blake Cousins here with some breaking news in regards to the off-world vehicles recovered. Uh, this is what the Pentagon is stating and we've been following up on it and we thought it'd be a good idea to get in touch with the man himself who was the original whistleblower in regards to an off-world vehicle recovered during an archaeological dig. We're gonna be speaking with Jim Goodall, who just spoke with Bob Lazar just moments ago. We're gonna share that conversation with you. And we're also gonna have our special correspondents today chiming in on what they think of Lazar's latest statements and what he knew and was he right all along. Goof on Radio, Richard Giordano is gonna join us along with Apollo Asteria, who's gonna chime in as well as the connection between Bob Lazar's statements and what's breaking today. And we're also gonna to get to Jim Goodall and his statements in regards to his recent conversation just moments ago with Bob Lazar. Let's just get some insight from Jim right now. Jim, how you doing? What's going on? With the events of uh, this last Thursday with uh, on Fox News, I felt I had to call a longtime friend of mine uh, who I've known since before he went to work out in the desert, and that's uh, Bob Lazar. So I called him up, uh, talked to his wife first, because you know, she's sort of his... Uh, gatekeeper and i asked bob i said hey what do you think you you know you finally been uh, uh authenticated and he said nah i'm gonna g give it a couple days i said he said when i first heard it he said he was you know he was really really excited and then he sat down and thought for a second and he said i can't imagine them releasing anything significant this may be a smoke screen but in a couple days uh get back to me and i'll uh if it's if it's still in the news and if it still hasn't disappeared, I would more than more than happy to you know, give my opinion. But right now, he said I'm, I'm holding back. But I did talk to Bob. Uh, Doc Skinner uh, was in on the conversation, and he had a big smile on his face. Uh, for those who don't know, I knew Bob before he went to work out in the desert, uh, and I met him with John Lear. I met him at John Lear's house, and I had just photographed the F-117, and I was the first person to do it and all the photo mats were closed by the time we got back to Vegas. And uh, Lear said, hey, I got a friend coming over. He just moved here from Albuquerque. Seems like a cool guy. I think you'll like him. And in, in the front door came Bob Lazar, nice guy. We, and I told him about my dilemma that I had shots of the F-117. And he said, hey, I got, a, I got a film processing unit at home on the other side of town. Let's go process it. So he jumped in his car and we're about five minutes out of John Lear's house. And Bob looks at me and said, you yeah, know, I feel sorry for Lear. I said, why is that? I said, well, he's from this incredibly famous, you know, aviation family, Learjet. His dad brought that to the world. And said, that, and the son of a bitch believes in UFOs. I mean, he said, how, how stupid is that? And this is before he went to work out in the desert. And he's, he also said, you couldn't put a gun to my head to convince me that UFOs were real. He said, I'm a nuclear physicist. If I can't put my hands on it or prove it mathematically, it doesn't exist. It was like a Twilight Zone episode. It just kept getting stranger. The fact that that was happening at all was the weirdest part. Look, it's been 30 years. And all of a sudden you raised it to this level. You know, this is a powerful technology, fearsome technology, and you just don't want everyone to have. This is amazing after what just came out by the New York Times and what Tucker Carlson said about having or acquired recently off-world vehicles. So the conversation switched to, so Bob Lazar might have been telling us the truth all along. But Bob did say the, 
what he thinks he was working on was from archaeological sites. Like, they, they found them in an archaeological dig site. I don't know how much <laughs> that has... Uh, I don't know if there's any proof of that anywhere, but uh, if Bob's saying it and mainstream media is uh, putting out there that we recently acquired, it doesn't really match up with what Bob Lazar said, because if we recently acquired off-world vehicles, that's recent. I'm thinking within the last 10 years. Isn't that what Tucker said? That was the quote. But apparently just recovered are off-world vehicles not made on this earth. That's a direct quote. We're not exactly sure what they mean by that. But what does this mean? Recently recovered off-world vehicles. You know what it means. Off-world. Well, I am telling the truth. I, I, I've tried to prove that. Uh, What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. You're talking about contact, physical, <laughs> physical contact and proof of, uh, from another, another system, another planet, another intelligence. This story with Bob Lazar has become so popular all of a sudden, again, because in 2018, two years ago, uh, his, his documentary was released on Netflix. So. Um, this caused a lot of people in the younger community to start to hear about a story that had never heard about it before. And of course it caused a storm on Area 51. And what is so cool about this to me is that, you know, it kind of ended up being a conspiracy party and it was kind of a joke. But really it's amazing that this happened because it shows that people are demanding answers and they want them. And as an American and through the Freedom of Information Act, we should have the answers, especially if our taxpaying dollars are going into these different programs. This story is extraordinary, especially if it's true. And it all started in the desert, just north of Las Vegas. A local scientist who's worked at Groom Lake said to be where top secret weapon systems have been tested over the years. He has asked that his identity be shielded. Exactly what's going on up there? What's going on up there could be the most important event in history. Not from Earth, off world, out there, aliens. To me, that's what it is. Now, there's no proof of that, but, um, but when you're talking about off world, it's not on the world. <laughs> it's definitely off world. I mean, it sounds like anything is possible nowadays with ufology, with UFOs, UAPs, whatever you want to call them. Uh, it's almost as if we may be show we they could show us an alien vehicle in the next two weeks. It wouldn't surprise me at this point. His real name is Robert Lazar. He says he was hired to work at an area called S4, which is a few miles south of Groom Lake. At S4, he says, are flying saucers, antimatter reactors, and other working examples of technology that is seemingly beyond human capabilities. I did not believe that this should be a security matter. Some of it, sure. But just the concept that there's definite proof. We even have articles from another world, another system. You just can't not tell everyone. You know, if people ask me, said, you know, why, why am I such a firm believer in UFOs? And it, it comes down to a couple things. First of all, it's a conversation I had with Ben Rich, who at the time was the retired president of the Lockheed Skunk Works. I mean, he was Kelly Johnson's right-hand man and probably the only person who could really fill his shoes. And just before he passed away in December of, uh, I think it was 96, I called him up. He was at USC Medical Center. Now, Ben and I talked once a quarter for 25 years, so he, he always accepted my calls and vice versa. And we were talking about all sorts of things, things that go bump in the night. And we, we, I asked him about UFOs, and he said, Jim, we have things out in the desert, and he wasn't referring to Area 51, but we have things out in the desert that's 50 years beyond what you can comprehend. Not what you think you can make in 50 years, but what you can comprehend. And he said, if you've seen movies like Star Trek or Star Wars, we've been there, done that, or decided it wasn't worth the effort. 
I said, Ben, you want to expand upon that? And in typical Ben Rich fashion, he said, nope. And uh, he passed away 10 days later. They, these technologies could very well be free energy technologies that could completely change the way we are doing things. And if climate change is such an issue, why aren't we looking into these? I think, um, and that's exactly what Bob Lazar is saying in his, with his story, is that he wants to disclose these suppressed technologies because apparently they would very much change the world in a much better way. And I think that's what is most important here and what we really need to be looking at here. So I'm excited that Tucker Carlson came out with his latest uh, breaking news. And I do think that the world is ready for this information. Maybe not as much 60 years ago because of religious programming and, you know, it, everything was just so new 60 years ago, but I think people now are changing the way they think about things and looking at things much differently. I think the media is kind of opening people's minds to the ideas of space bearing civilizations. And I think at this point in time, we're much more ready to start being disclosed this information. So I do think that this very likely is the crap that Bob Lazar worked on. And what would be the implications if, if another announcement like that happens like the one tucker carlson made how would the world react how would you react i know how i would react same way i did when tucker said it the first time shocked bewildered excited confused mad all emotions erupted at one time here in that but as the dust is settling i don't know what to believe but I'm going to tell you this. I believe we have been visited or they've always been here. I, what, what does that even mean? Either they've been here or they're visiting. It's probably both. Look, I misspoke. It's a very interesting time we're living in. We should be careful how we word ourselves, including myself. So we'll be doing uh, everything we can to bring you the truth. And I'm going to do my best, too, because we don't want to mess this up. This is history in the making. I think so, anyway. The other thing, you know, in, in addition to Ben Rich telling me that if you see movies like Star Trek or Star Wars, we've been there, done that. I interviewed an SR-71 pilot. He was uh, flying at about 78,000 feet. He's in the far western Pacific. He's flying out of Kadena. It was about 11 o'clock at night. He's flying straight and level, Mach 2.7, which is about 1,800 miles an hour. And at 78,000 feet, three quarter moon off to his uh, port side. And all of a sudden he gets a glint off another craft going in the same direction, but six or 7,000 feet above him and maybe five miles off to his starboard side. So he contacted Kadena, Okinawa, that's where the SR-71s were based out of, and called the command post to see if there was another bird up there. He called him up in secure voice. He said, no, you're up there by yourself. So he, uh, all of a sudden his backseater got on the intercom and said, hey, we have company. And he said, yeah, I'm going to go take a closer look. So he advanced the throttles and started climbing. He did about a 10 degree bank. And he, when he was about uh, still a thousand or so feet below the object and still a mile or two away, this thing took off at about a 30 degree angle of attack, which is like so, and left him in the dust. He said he, he lost sight of it between 180 and 200,000 feet. Now that was about 1972. Fast forward to 1980, he's retired from the Air Force. He has his top secret clearance. He applies for a job and gets the job as facility manager at Area 51. So after he was there about a year, he knew most everybody anyway, but after he was there about a year, he asked him, he started asking everybody, do we have anything that goes Mach 12? And everybody he talked to, and, and he was friends with him, he drank with him, and he said, nope. Uh, it, we, you know, we, it, wasn't, it wasn't flown here, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, tested here, so... Uh, what you're dealing with, I don't know. 
So I asked, and that's what I, and that's the question he answered when I asked him if he believed in UFOs. Well, I am telling the truth. I, I, I've tried to prove that uh, what's going on up there could be the most important event in history. You're talking about contact, physical, <laughs> physical contact and proof of, uh, from another, another system, another planet, another intelligence. That's got to be the biggest event in history, period. And it's real. And it's real and it's there. Incredible revelations coming into third phase of moon. We'll see if Jim Goodall gets more information from Bob Lazar. Apparently in a couple days, he's gonna come out with more statements, more background, and right here at third phase of moon, we're gonna bring them to you as it comes in. We wanna thank all our correspondents who helped in this episode and everybody from around the world who's joining us right now in this live premiere with his breaking news coming in. Give us a big thumbs up if you appreciated the Bob Lazar update. And if you've captured anything amazing in the skies in regards to UFOs, submit it to us right here at Third Phase of Moon. My contact is in the description below my email. You can contact me via Facebook or Twitter. Keep your eyes on the skies, everybody. We're not alone. We'll see you real soon. Third.